Table or truth? And there was just a lot, a lot to cover this week with um, the game of dare, the, the Mexican standoff happening at the border of Texas. Okay. And I don't even, I, th- I think we should just go straight, straight into the show. Because, go for it, man. You know, as everybody knows, it's Table for Truth. My name is X. This is Tyson. Welcome to another episode of T4T. And, uh, yeah, like I was telling Tyson, I was uh, flabbergasted at the level of insanity that's brewing up at the Texas border where we may have what's uh, short of a Mexican standoff, or I should say a Mexican standoff to the negative one. As Border Patrol agents from Texas you know, wish to, uh, we'll just generalize, keep people uh, below Mexico and in Mexico from entering the uh, U.S. And that just seems like, at this point, it looks like Biden's going to have to flex his big guns because if he really wants to keep that border open, now people are, are sick of uh, what's going on. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I don't know specifically about this incident you're you're talking about. Are you talking that the we're going to go with the governor... It's uh, Abbott from Texas. He is doing what? Well, he's he's really just, at this point, uh, he's put the National Guard up on the border, and, and he's keep kicking people out. I think he had a record of 5,000 uh, people not admitted into the country, like an RPG game, this very afternoon, as of January 28th, 2024. That's uh, that's like a record in, in months, maybe years, of, of people being not allowed into uh, or through the border uh, illegally, if you will. So a lot of stuff's going on there, but you haven't you haven't read anything about this, or what, no. what, are, we, what are we looking at here? No? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I looked at the uh, three army soldiers who were killed in a drone attack in Jordan. Okay, we, we, we should visit that in a minute, but let's not, like, you, flip around. You asked it. You okay, asked, fair enough. You we'll, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. Uh, there's plenty of time for everything. Um, I wanted to, yeah, let me let me just uh, read an article here so we can, we're, we're all on the same boat, if you will. Okay. So this is news to you, huh? Well, this particular incident, but not the border. I have stuff for you on that. All right, Governor Greg Abbott says Texas prepare, is prepared if Biden federalizes the National Guard. This is from Spectrum News, uh, South Texas, El Paso. So, I mean, that's pretty... Uh, no, uh, hold it. Let's break this down okay. before we get it. So, Abbott is prepared if Biden federalizes the National Guard. Yes. So, he's not going to do anything. He wants Biden to federalize the National Guard. Well, he doesn't want to be the one who started the, uh, mm-hmm. the first shot heard okay. around the world. He doesn't want to be the next John Brown. Can you blame him? Yeah, I can blame Abbott for a lot, but, but roll on. All right, well, as, as it says in the article, as tensions between Texas and the Biden administration continue over security at the southern border, some Democrats have called on President Joe Biden to federalize the state's National Guard. That would place Texas National Guard under the command of Biden rather than Abbott. Now, as far as I can tell, nobody is supporting that. In Texas, uh, it's crazy how they would—they'd be willing to do that, seeing how. Well, first of all, Abbott himself said that he's—he thinks it's doubtful that Biden would make the move, and he referred to it as boneheaded. <laughs> uh, boneheaded but, for not making the move. For making that move, why would you create more crisis if constitutionally the federal government isn't even doing their job and uh, securing the border? And so Abbott is simply just exercising a state's rights to secure and protect the border. And now the very federal government that was sworn to kind of protect the states is going against that creed. I think that's the general reason why, is it 25 states are supporting Greg Abbott in this endeavor and are willing to send their National Guard down there. And, and if it really gets ugly, worst case scenario, we could have a civil war. Uh, that's Not ab- unlike that's absurd. seen in 1864. Absurd. We could have a civil war. What, what kind of civil war? Well, in this case, it'd probably be more civilized in the sense there'd be a lot of social media trolling on both sides. You know, Karen screaming about, you know, how how uh, how hateful and spiteful and vitriolic the other side is. I'm still not not getting it. So Abbott wants Biden to federalize. 
The National Guard. No, he tests. doesn't want Abide. He wants him out of there and or do his job. Like if the national, if the if the uh, federal government is interfering and bringing their like their their people in there, like uh, border agents and stuff, to cut wires, uh, razor wires that have been set up against that border area. He's like, we're just going to replace them. If you're going to keep this crap up, it's going to get ugly because sooner or later, some sort of a scuffle is going to start. You you know that Abbott has gone against a court ruling requiring him to move remove the razor wire that he has. Yeah, but he's going a, he's within his constitutional rights. No, it's, he's not. He's breaking the law. Once a court denies you from executing that plan which has killed some migrants, you're supposed to abide by the law. You are you have sworn to abide by the Constitution, and the courts have said, no, you cannot keep the razor wire that he has going uh, across the river. Uh, Whom am I supposed to believe? Spectrum News, El Paso, Texas says right here. What? All right. Uh, Abbott, following the ruling, the one you just talked about, said Texas is placing more razor wire along the banks. While it can be viewed as a defiant gesture, Texas is not defying the Supreme Court order by doing so. All right. Um, to what degree? I'm not a lawyer, but but uh, I believe this all has to do with the fact that if uh, Abbott's Texas is defying the government by by ignoring these these uh, mandates, commands, whatever you want to call it, Abbott is simply saying, "But you're not even following the constitutional duties that you have as a federal government, so screw you. We're not we're not listening to you." It's not the federal; it's the court. The court made the decision. What you have is okay. If the courts are not following constitutional, uh, the doctrine. courts make the call on cost, constitutional queries when yeah. there is a question about whether How is what you are executing is. Within the Constitution, you're a law guy. How how is this defying the Constitution by Abbott literally just protecting his own state from an invasion? How is that unconstitutional? Uh, cruel and inhuman punishment. It's not. People just simply don't have to walk into the freaking wires. It's it's not cruel and inhuman. If you are not supposed to be crossing the border, right? Mm-hmm. It's like don't stand next to the electric fence, right? Stay away from the gorilla pit, right? Is it cruel and unusual if somebody leaps over the uh, the lion's den and then lands into the lion's chamber and then all of a sudden gets mauled by a lion? Is that is that cruel from the zoo to, to simply allow the physics of that possibility to happen? Or is it more, if you're the person transgressing through the border that has been set up there with a warning sign, right, isn't it sort of on your integrity and, and just Darwinian like common sense to be like, you know what, we're not welcome here right now. Let's wait till things get simmered down a little bit, or let's at least study what, what's going on. Now, nobody's denying the fact that, yes, there's people that want, are trying to seek asylum and stuff, but even people in South America must at least concede that this whole thing's gone out of control. If they just want to conveniently ignore the realities, that if they make it up to, like, Chicago or New York and freeze to death because there's not enough housing there, is it cruel and unusual for the city of New York that has no housing, no more lifeboats, to allow them to freeze to death? How does that work? Your, your floor, please. Okay. Well, one, Governor Abbott has sworn allegiance to the Constitution. Right. A court had ordered him to remove the razor wire that he cannot use it. But that subjective that, is cruel and unusual. It, it, it's not it, cruel it, and unusual if the people are not exercising common sense. It, it, that's... What you just said is irrelevant. The court made a decision. So you follow. So it's the it's the uh, Nuremberg clause. You, you just follow you, orders. You fail to abide by a court order. Guess what? You are you are a law breaker, and you have to suffer the consequences of breaking the law. I suppose you do, but in this case, since most a lot of states now are actually not agreeing with these absurd mandate rules by the courts or the Biden administration. In all fairness, you keep pointing at the Biden administration. Oh, so it's not it's not his fault at all. You're right. They, they but, didn't. Their but, their cabinet had nothing to do with the open border encouragement. 
again, you you say it's an open border. They want it. They want to process everybody to go through, but then all that means is that they're allowing people to go through, and then they get lost in the mix as as they get a court date years down the line. So it doesn't really matter because the law obviously is is a little bit twisted, and everybody knows this, right? So. You know, the Biden administration is just playing on legal words and clauses when in reality, most people are like, dude, we can't have this many people just flowing through the border like this anymore. And, and they don't they refuse to see it because of just some technicalities and like legal nomenclature. Laws are made by Congress. Laws are made to serve the people. Just don't forget, Congress is there to serve the people. If Congress fails to do that and a majority of the people are not agreeing with these laws. They are no longer following their constitutional mandates as servants of the people. So they are then lawbreakers. No, the and actual the actual government is lawbreaking because the they're law. they're ignoring the constitutional duties they have to serve the people. If they completely ignore it, then by default they're the bigger lawbreakers because they've been given a position of stewardship that they have failed to actually utilize in a mature way. Now, until they can actually admit that this is kind of douchey, there's not going to be any any talks about this. But some ugly stuff's going to happen. Why is it so hard for people to understand? If, if I walk, if I see a freaking, like, a bunch of saws, a, saw, a bunch of sawzels, and I walk right into them, is it my fault that I walked into these sawzels? Are, are there, like, guillotines in the board or something, like booby traps? Or is this just simply, like, clear-cut wire? We're going to try to get through it. Uh, well, don't go through the razor wire. Something bad could happen. Is, is, that, a, is that an insane thing to consider? Why would that be cruel and unusual punishment? Philosophically, why would that be cruel and unusual punishment? Just curious. Why, when you have a person, including children, crossing a river, and one of the obstacles is razor wire, that's cruel. Yeah, it is cruel for you to walk in there with your children. I agree with you. So I guess we're in agreement. Like, why would you, a mother or a father, insist on walking your kids into a, a, a freaking meat grinder? They've traveled months and months over thousands of miles. Why would you do that to, the to your United kids? States. I don't know. Okay, don't there you go. Then, 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 then we really can't have to throw that cruel and unusual point. Because it's, I mean, look, if this happened in the States, right, and you saw a mom literally allow the kids to play near a, a, an abandoned x-ray machine, all right, or a, a, a guillotine in the junkyard, okay? And the mom uh, was like, well, it's there. I want my kids to be free and play. Uh, and the mom neglects the very laws of poss possible physics outcomes that could happen by going near one of those things. Isn't it more the responsibility of the mom or the dad to enact cruel and unusual punishment by allowing their kids to waltz right into a, a, a death trap like that? And in the United States, those children would be taken away from Exactly. Them. So and isn't it kind of hypocritical to assume that the, somehow these migrants are immune from, like, the laws of physics? I don't understand. How does that work? The laws of physics. The What's laws of physics. If I walk into a razor with, wire... With the, the um, DHS taking children away from neglectful parents. All right, so let me let me let me... Let me uh, spell it out for you. Okay. If I walk into a bone cutter device, a, uh, a saw, a mechanical, uh, we'll just say, yeah, like a saw, like, you know, one of those ones that used to cut wood, okay? And I see it hundreds of feet away and I walk right into it, okay? Even if I'm in a construction site, isn't it sort of partially on me or nature itself edicts that if I hew my limb completely and mangle it, uh, well, common sense. I have eyes. I can see the thing ahead of me. I, I would agree if it's booby trapped. Okay, if the entire like freaking uh, southern border was set up like D Day or something like that, then that's cruel, unusual punishment. I would agree a hundred percent. That's messed up. There's minefields. There's like freaking um, you know Hogarth's funnies just floating around the beaches there, like with weird looking like tanks in the shape of strange contraptions that can find devious ways of like killing people. I would agree. But this is just simple classic wire razors, you know, that you see in prison from allow, not allowing the prisoners to escape. I'm not saying it's the most ideal circumstance, but I, I don't understand why somebody would waltz right into that wire or, or go in it at your own risk. 
why is the, uh, the the state of Texas all of a sudden cruel and heel because of simply setting up wire? How is that unconstitutional? See, it's a play on words. All right, the courts are seeing something that clearly the majority of the people have. I, I feel like I'm repeating myself at this point, you know, but I'm just saying. Okay. Who's more inhumane? The the negligent parents that, that don't think of the consequences of going through a gauntlet like that, or simply the uh, state of Texas simply setting up a board? The state of Texas. Why? I just explained that. Number one, they had a court order. Yeah, but, and, but, and but the court order not... was defying the constitutional uh, mandates of serving the people, though, and protecting the border from invasion. So how does, how does the court necessarily follow their constitutional justification the court made an order he is obliged to obey said lawful order it's failure uh, to do that makes him a lawbreaker and he needs to suffer the consequences for failing to follow a court order so this That's is a it. moral black situation it's not moral okay. it's black and white it's, it's law it's just law it's law okay That's so it. we're robots that just follow laws that are made to serve humans hey, he's he swore he swore to abide. He swore by to the abide by the constitution of the, Constitution yeah. of the United Provided. States. A court made a decision, and he is obliged to follow. Provided it. the courts are actually following the constitutional duties as a real court, not a kangaroo court, not a uh, one-sided, partisan, corrupted court. Right? I mean, there, there's a lot of ways to look at this. At any rate, I guess we'll see what happens because in about another couple weeks. Some, something's going to happen. There's going to be a standoff. No, there's not. And I don't think, well, then I guess there's nothing else to talk I, about. It's easy. It's going to be taken out and removed, period. Well, let's if see he what doesn't happens. do it, the federal government will do it. And the, they will be stopped by the state of Texas, uh, by the no, National Guard. <laughs> you don't think so? I know so. How do you know so? Uh, yeah, it's, come on. It's we, easy. The, he, viewers want to hear this. How do I know so? Yeah, how do you in particular know that nothing's going to happen in the next couple of weeks? It's not. It's bluster. It's, it's BS. And this is another Abbott trick. In another order Abbott and Costello. But, but let's let's go to the heart of, of this issue. Okay. For decades, Congress has not done anything about the immigration laws in order to stop. That's fair. Some, some, I okay? agree with you. And yeah. then, so currently what we have is on the table the Senate... Republicans and Democrats are coming to an agreement on a, a new immigration policy or law. And before it has been finalized, the House Republicans have already balked at it and said they're not going to um, um, they're not going to e either vote on it or they won't pass it. Isn't it because though that the, the, the loophole is that there's border agents down there, all right, but they're not allowed to actually kick anybody out of the, the uh, admit, not admit people in through the border. They can only process people and then set them up on a court date, but, but they're allowed to just pass through illegally into the U.S. Isn't that what the real reason why there's, a, there's an issue are, with? Are you with, talking about those that come and turn themselves over to Customs and Border Protection? You mean the, the way it's supposed to go, where, you, where you, you actually go see a border agent if you're crossing through the border, right? Which is the the appropriate thing to do, right? Well, my understanding of the current immigration is however you turn yourself and you claim asylum, and then you process, and then uh, currently you're either deported back if not immediately approved, or you set up with a court date and it hopefully. I don't believe that relatives. the deported back clause is really working because otherwise there would be a lot more people that have not made it through the border. So that clearly, there clearly there's something wrong there. Otherwise, you wouldn't. See no, there are of, there are deportations. It's just well, not, okay. If you can't, not, if you have a missile attached to your back or something like that, and a couple of bandoliers and maybe a couple of rifles, you know, stuck to a bag or something, yeah, you'll probably get deported, right? Or that 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 may be an issue, but at the end of the day. Uh, when all said and done, like, you're not, you know, it, it seems like anybody can go through, you know. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this show today. <laughs> this show has been brought to you, by the way, by the uh, crisis going on in the border. Uh, for anybody who's listening today, we would not have this show if it wasn't for this crisis. It just seems to have gone out of control. So, I'm not sure how, exa I, I, I agree with you that there was 
very poor policies have brought this reality into its like conclusion right now. But now we're at the end game here. Like something's gonna happen. But you you claim nothing's gonna happen the next couple of weeks. They're just gonna Nothing. take the wire down, and then uh, Abbott's gonna look like a weakling. Uh, Abbott's just nothing but talk and bluster. Okay, and, and, we'll and, see and, what yeah. happens. Maybe uh, you're right, but I I, I don't know. I, I'm actually uh, I'm get your popcorn out because I I'm I'm I don't know. I don't I don't buy it. Twenty five states are all just talk. That, Everybody's that, afraid that, that, of an that's actual that's scuffle the same, with the, the same thing very with intimidating the 20, Biden administration in the uh, federal federal uh, government. Yes, that's just like the twenty twenty election where uh, uh, Ken Paxton, Texas, uh, uh, put out a brief uh, looking to uh, have a recount or deny the elections in the swing states, and there was a whole host of other AGs around the country that signed on to it. It was BS, and it was. It was dismissed by the courts. There's a whole host of OGs right now that are very concerned about this border, and I don't think they're going to let this thing stand. The militia man I'm talking about. So we'll see what happens. But the thing is, currently, once again, uh, there is a, a bill that's being worked out, again, with the Senate, and House Republicans are already saying that they're, they're not going to vote for it. And so, uh, which is problematic because they, they cried about the border a couple of weeks ago. They go down and shoot video, uh, Johnson and the rest of his cronies down there saying that what the problem is at the border. And then we have a solution, more money, uh, more agents, uh, better technology. Simply just use the, the existing laws that are already there and not let people through the border, I guess. You, you not get it. The system law said all you need to do is turn yourself in to an agent and you get processed. And the courts are backed up and it could take years before you get a court date. So just simply create a new law. I guess if Biden really well, wants to win the election. Well, you keep saying Biden. Biden doesn't make the law. Congress does. That's the problem. If Biden stepped out right now and said, you know what, I, I want to set an executive order uh, that, that's going to change this whole border policy, I think he might get at least maybe another 3% votes for him for president. I don't know. But he hasn't done anything. So I guess maybe he's just oblivious to what's going on. So you Isn't, really, isn't Kamala Harris you, or border czar? You really don't know what's going on currently in, in Washington reference the border. There, Subterfuge? Uh, chicanery? I mean, what else do I need to know about it? I mean, come on. Like, I'm just saying. I mean, you think they could have... You and I could have solved this over the weekend, all right? It may not have been pretty, but, like, we would have solved it one way or another. It would have just been sheer discipline. Close the border. How so? Well, we have to set up a new executive law. What's that? Well, it's not just going to, like... Like, apparently the law we were doing isn't really functional, so we got to make it a little bit stricter on people coming across the border... Uh, in terms of processing. Or maybe there's only a certain flux of people that are allowed in the border. So first come, first serve. Your first 5,000, you know, for the, for that month, come through. Anybody else, see you later. Wait in line on the other side of the border. That, wh- I don't know why that would be such a, a hard thing to, to push. Maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm crazy, but, like, I, I, don't, I don't get it. Well, what has happened through the decades... Yeah is that Republicans in Congress has refused to negotiate and get a new border policy, immigration. Yeah, I, I, okay, listen, and, I, and I, so I, the I agree problem with you on is, that, if that's the case. I mean, Mitch could... McConnell, actually, he's on, on board currently, but um, uh, Kevin McCarthy in the House refused to. Before him, uh, Paul Ryan. Okay. When, when given that opportunity. They, it's been on the table, and Republicans have refused to do anything about it. Now, they have a solid, solid new immigration law, which again, I named it. More money, more agents, newer technology. Wait a minute, this is pushed by the Democrats, Democrats or the Republicans? You help, haven't help, been listening. Help us out again. Senate Democrats right. and Republicans. Okay are negotiating yes. a new immigration bill. I got that part. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's who's working on it, right? But you're saying Republicans... The House yeah. 
Republicans have already said it's dead on arrival, okay. which means that they're not going to vote for something that they've been crying. There's a crisis on the border. Okay, this, that that I understand. I I get what you're saying. They're not they're not helping the situation. They're not true. helping us. You have Who, to have. That would imply that the Democrats are the ones who are coming up with more agents, more tech, more everything, right? That's what you're you're suggesting. Have agreed with Republicans in the Senate, yes, and House Democrats will also vote for the plan. And it's it's not like the progressives are happy about this plan because it it requests some things. One thing that it does is it doesn't guarantee um, a path to citizenship, which is something that has has been something the Democrats have been looking for, but this does not include it. But it, it includes all these things that Republicans have been asking for. Again, you have a crisis on the border. This is something that can mitigate it. It also, if I remember correctly, does have a shut down the border plan. If it's so many uh, uh, people are coming in, uh, migrants are attempting to come in, and at a certain point, you can shut down the border. That's all in the plan. And this is the boldest plan of all the ones over the last decade uh, for the right, for the Republicans. Tyson, help us out. Who started the overall uh, crappy border policies? You, you study a lot, so... Like, even back in the day, that, that made this a very, like, checkered uh, policy right now that has caused this crisis to become a reality. Like, what, well, what well, side we, really started this? Well, I, I don't know who started, what side, what it is. We are a nation of immigrants. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, coming in uh, and wanting to be here and becoming a, a citizen uh, and helping this great nation... Uh, why is it that, look, look forward to? Why is it that there's so many immigrants that I talk to that say I came in here through the legal channels? I didn't get like perks, you know, like it seems like uh, individuals in in Chicago and New York are getting, you know, for uh, you know housing, you know, food stamps. It's just like you were either worthy to come in here and contribute, or and they're they're actually resentful, even though they're immigrants. They're resentful of these new waves of immigrants. Why why do you suppose that is? Well, it's... Hip hypocrisy? No, it's not hypocrisy. The... What one would like and appreciate, and what I'm for, is you apply for asylum, particularly asylum, because why is it that you need asylum? Well, because our immigration law says that if you ask for asylum, we take you and you go through the process and you may get the United States. If we don't have that as a package or make a requirement that if you, you, you must apply for asylum. Okay. In the, let me finish. Sorry. You must apply for asylum in your home country, in our embassy, in your country, and then wait for an answer. Otherwise, you will not be accepted. Well, yeah. Guess what? You will not have people com coming up to, up I, to the border. I agree. I don't know why that was never pushed. I mean, I don't, I don't know how our, both parties have failed to actually see the existential dilemma that happens as a result of that little clause. Like, I don't, you got me. I don't, I don't get. It. Like I said, you and I could have figured this out over the weekend. Well, right? it's it's used as a power play uh, for for some to beat over the Democrats over the head about people coming across the border, Wait open borders. So it, the, it's the not Democrats that are doing Democrats. it not out of humanitarian reasons? They're doing it as a power play, really? No, I didn't say the Democrats. The right, the Republicans have been using this at, as a club to beat the Democrats over so that they can continue to use this and, and maintain power. So the Republicans, unless I'm mistaken, you're saying the Republicans are okay with the open border? Deep down, like the uh, elite Republicans. No, I did not say that. Well, then I don't I'm, know. I'm, we, I'm, we, 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 I, we I, get that. Because, like, which party is more in favor of using the idea of open borders? As Nobody. A, not e no, not, not the, even Democrats. the Democrats. No. It's so, Kamala Harris, AOC, none of them, they don't, they don't really push that or anything, that idea. Democrats 
do not want a, an open border. Democrats, there is no the, open border. Now, the there Democrats, are people... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go no, ahead. No, the Democrats what? The Democrats don't want an open border, but they failed to, like, at least suggest what you just suggested three minutes ago. Seek asylum in your own country, wait for an answer. They never pushed that. I've never heard that in the news, which is surprising because the news tends to be leftist Democrat. And there's no history. Really? Fox any, News? No, no, no. A lot of the news mainstream Max news. All... And even them, like, none of them have pushed this very simple solution in the last 15 years. So I'm a little confused why no party has the sense to at least push that. That that's, you know what? Maybe we should just end the show on that note, and let everybody ponder that one because I don't know what the hell to make of it. I mean, that seems like such a simple solution. Instead of uh, grant people asylum while they're already in through the border here, have them do it in their own like at the embassy in their own home country, and then wait for an answer to see if they even qualify for asylum. I don't know why that was never pushed. All I got out of this conversation was that both parties s- s- conveniently. Miss that out, and then use the people themselves that are crossing the border as pawns to kind of push some sort of political talking point. That's what I'm getting out of this. I can't tell which side's more sinister, though, by doing that. But it sounds to me like you're saying the Republicans are, but the Democrats under the border czars like Kamala Harris and stuff seem to insinuate they're all for open borders. So I don't get it. Come here, Karine Jean Pierre, right? The spokesperson for the Biden cabinet, she seems to push it all the time. So I, I, I am confused. But but we'll just we'll just leave it at that. I, I don't know. We'll uh we'll have to meditate on this one, man. But um thank you for uh, a good a good discussion today on, on the borders in Texas. And uh, we'll see you for the next episode uh, in a little bit. Your number one hub for learning about current events brought upon you in civilized idyllic discussion. So if you like the show, hit a like, subscribe, and feel free to share any episodes.